So we're going to jump back into Jarnail Singh's testimony now where it's going over his career history and an interesting point picked up by Jason Beer from the CV that he's provided in his witness statement where he says he was the senior lawyer in the criminal law team prior to separation from the Royal Mail but seems to backtrack somewhat and say he was one of a team of eight. Is this just maybe a bit of boasting on the CV or a genuine typo? Let's find out whilst we jump back into the inquiry. You've come today to assist the inquiry with the issues arising in phase four of the inquiry. That is the investigation and prosecution of sub-postmasters for criminal offences. Uh, we're going to ask you to return kindly next year to give evidence about the issues in phases five and six of the inquiry. And that includes your interactions with Simon Clark, your interactions with Cartwright King more generally, uh, the circumstances in which Mr. Clark's shredding advice came to be written, your involvement with the second site reviews, your communications with Susan Crichton and other um, senior members of the post office, uh, Chris Ojard as well, and Brian Altman KC. I'm not going to ask you about those matters today, although some of the documents that I'm going to refer you to touch on phase four issues, even though they were created in 2012, 2013 and 2014. So there, Jan Helsing is due to come in phase five and six, as he has always been, which is due to start on the 9th of April, so roughly a couple of months' time. Extensive involvement from the post office uh, side uh, in his capacity as a lawyer for the post office and how far his involvement spreads, so we should certainly have a lot of interesting things he's able to comment on. Can I start, please, with your professional background? In uh, your witness statement, in paragraphs 6, 7 and 8, which is on page 3, no need to display it for the moment, you describe your roles within the Royal Mail Group and with Post Office Limited, and you exhibit a copy of your um, CV, your curriculum at Vitae, setting out your uh, qualifications and your career. Can I summarise it, those two sources, paragraphs 6, 7 and 8, and the CV as follows, and tell me whether uh, I get it right. Uh, firstly, is it right that between 1985 and 1989, you were a legal executive in private practice, and that involved work in two firms? In the latter firm, you worked in conveyancing, buying and selling houses. Yes. You joined the post office as a legal executive in December 1989, and again, you worked in conveyancing, specifically in the post office's commercial conveyancing department. Yes, yes, I did. But whilst you were working for the post office, you were admitted as a solicitor in uh, December 1992, is that right? That's right, yes. And does that mean that you were studying for your <laughs> Law Society finals whilst you were working in the conveyancing department? Uh, yes, yes, I was, yes. And then in September 1993, you transferred to the post office's litigation department, is that right? Uh, that's right, yes. And that was handling civil work, is that correct? No, no, uh, the... Uh, that, uh, yeah, that, that was the um, civil litigation department before I joined the prosecution department. Yeah, so you transferred to the litigation department in September 1993 and worked on civil work. Civil work, yes. And then in August 1995, you transferred to the prosecution's department. That's right, yes. So he has, got, he has got involvement in both private sector as well as public sector. He's clearly well experienced and well qualified, so we should certainly know what he's doing. And coupled with that, he's been involved in litigation prior to Horizon, prior to even the test of Horizon. So he has genuinely been around since the beginning of the Horizon system and the post office scandal as relates to it. You tell us in your CV that upon transfer to the prosecution's department, you were the senior lawyer in the prosecution's department, is that yes. right? Yes, I was, yes. Was there only one um, senior lawyer in the prosecution's department? Well, when I joined? Uh, no, I think... Um, uh, I think the structure of the team was, I think uh, the, there was the head of uh, criminal law team. Sorry, say that again. There was uh, the structure of the prosecution de department when I joined uh, was that there were uh, head, head 
of the criminal law team. And who was that? And that was Mike Heath. And then you had eight senior lawyers on the same position, I think they were. And then you had three or four legal executives, three or four admin staff, and uh, f four or five secretaries. I see. So it, it, it's just in your, your CV, if we can have it up on the screen, WITN 0475 0101. Thank you. And if we look at the second page and look at the foot of the page, do you see the um, last paragraph where it says, um, in August 1995, I transferred to the prosecution department division as the senior lawyer? No, well, maybe the D need to come out. I mean, they, I think we were all on the same grade, basically. Some more experienced than others, but uh, they were all known as senior lawyers, and I think subsequently they changed the titles. Um, so, so where it says the senior lawyer, that's, um, that's a bit misleading, isn't it? Yeah, possibly. Only possibly. Is he trying to inflate his own importance there in the CV as he kind of stumbled upon that there? But clearly, in any case, whether he was one of eight or whether he is the senior lawyer, you know, he's clearly got a important and influential role within the criminal law team, as there is only in the organisational structure of the criminal law team, one person above him at that point, and that's the head of criminal law. So it, that should be as one of eight senior lawyers, uh, eight. And, there was, and there wasn't any other grade. We were all senior lawyers. Uh, yes, I, yeah. I think so, I think. OK. And um, did that remain the case, that you were the uh, one of the senior lawyers? Yes. Um, until separation in 2012? I don't know. Then subsequently, there were various structures. There were various roles, uh, name changes to principal and... Uh, principal lawyers and team leaders and all sorts of things like that. But uh, generally, we were in the same grade doing more or less the same work. OK. Uh, that can come down. Thank you. Um, did you manage other lawyers? Uh, no. No, I don't think any of us did, apart from the team leader or the, you know, the head of uh, criminal law. I think they managed. I don't think anybody, anybody actually managed anybody else, apart from the legal executive. But they, they basically assisted you. They worked with you rather than sort of manage them as such, because they were experienced. And so when the name senior lawyer got changed to team leader, you weren't in fact leading a team at all? Uh, I don't think it's... Uh, I think the only... Uh, th I don't think anything really changed apart from separation. On separation, obviously, I was the only... I'm just talking about before separation. No, 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 no. I think the, there was a team leader... Uh, or not team leader. He was the um, head of criminal law. I think that was one grade. And I think he managed and supervised everybody else. OK, uh, just a moment ago you said that the name changed from senior lawyer to principal lawyer to team leader, uh, referring to the role you were undertaking. Did that happen before um, separation in 2012? No, no, sorry, I, it's probably... Um, I'm, I'm trying to sort of adjust to the inquiries. Uh, yeah, th th there was the, the... Yeah, sorry, let me, let me clarify. There was the head of criminal law team. Yep. He managed basically the senior lawyers. And I think the principal... Sorry, he, he managed the senior lawyers? He managed all the, all the team, basically. The, yeah, the, you know, the legal executive, the secretaries, the admin, and also um, the, you know, the, the, the lawyers. That's basically it. He was the head of the team. And, and so, so from August 95 until separation in 2012, you remained the same grade senior yeah. lawyer? More or less, yes. More or less, or in but fact yeah, the same? Yeah, yeah. I mean, nothing changed for me, no. So the separation they're referring to there in 2012 is the separation of the post office from the Royal Mail. Uh, so the used to, um, post office used to operate underneath the Royal Mail and now doesn't or didn't since 2012, uh, and that remains the case till today. Now, at the time you became um, the senior lawyer, you were, I think, by my calculations, two years and eight months qualified, is that right? Uh, yes. I think so. And you hadn't practised in criminal law whilst you'd worked at the post office, is that right? Not with, uh, with the post office, no. Had you ever um, done any prosecution work before? Uh, in, when I first started, I was the uh, personal representative under the duty scheme, you know, when it came in, 1984, 85, whenever it was, when I, when I, when I worked very closely with one of the senior partners in the firm, Steve, uh, the first firm I joined. And I did about three, three, four years with it. That was defending, though, presumably. It was defending, but he did quite a bit of prosecution. I assisted with him. I assisted him. I don't know whether it was training standards or something like that now. I mean, years and years ago now. 
But he did something, and I did a lot of preparation for him, did all the research and everything else. But I have no, no, that, that's right. I mean, I, you, you could say that. Certainly, that was the only experience I had of criminal law. As a legal exec? As a legal exec, yes. Had you done any private prosecution work? Uh, no. Had you ever had to give advice on the full code test in the Code for Crown Prosecutors? Uh, prior to joining... Prior to joining as a senior lawyer in August 1995? No. Had you ever had to determine um, questions of evidential sufficiency, uh, whether to move to a charge or a summons before? Uh, not, not, as a pro not on the prosecution side of it. I mean, certainly I've uh, looked at the evidence, taken witness statements for the senior partner. Uh, well, most of the prepar work, preparation work was done by me. Had you ever had to deal with whether a prosecution was in the public interest from the prosecution side? No. So it's, it's fair to say he does have experience of private and public sector legal work, but not experience of prosecutorial work, which he ended up quite, being quite significantly involved with at the post office. He's possibly quite a bit absent, which could potentially give rise to some questions about the decisions which were taken, because he's undoubtedly well qualified. I guess it comes down to the experience of actually implementing the theory behind uh, the qualifications that he's got with the experience. And did you um, always report to the head of the criminal law team? Uh, we're talking about now the post office prosecution. Yes, yes. from August 95 uh, to yeah, was. Sep sep um, separation in 2012. Yeah. Uh, well, I inherited a very small uh, casework, but I worked very closely with uh, two of the senior lawyers, uh, very, very closely. I Who were they? I worked very closely with the, uh, number, number one or two senior lawyers. Yes, and who were they? Uh, there was Tony Brentnall and one of the ladies who's saying, Debbie Staples. Were you um, reporting, nonetheless, only to the head of criminal law? Um, I think... Uh, was, it, was he or she your line manager? I think it was... Uh, I suppose... I suppose uh, yeah, yes, I think so, yes. And did that remain constant until separation in 2012? I think it was Mike Heath originally, and then I think when... Uh, Rob, Robert, or Rob Wilson took over, yes, he was, yeah. And so um, they were your line managers? They were the line managers, yes. And where were you located? Uh, in firstly Impact House in Croydon, and then subsequently Victoria, Ankleson Street in Victoria. And were all of the lawyers located there? All the prosecution team has always been together, in, you know, either in Impact House or Victoria.